Hello everyone, and welcome to a Moogly 5 tutorial. This is going to be a more in-depth tutorial for everything that you need to know about Moogly. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. So when you first open up Moogly 5, you'll be brought to this page right here. This page just includes what the newest update is and maybe some of the information that it holds. Uh, usually just small stuff. Not sure when Moogly will be getting its next update, but hopefully that's, that's soon. Uh, on the left side here, you'll see that this is your projects. You can load a project that you have been working on for a while, or you can just hit the new project button to start a new project entirely. So opening up a new project will bring you to this page here. Now this looks a little daunting, but don't worry, I will break this down for you. So the bottom section is called media and it is split into two sections. Let's focus on the right side. On the right side, you have different WAV files as well as Vocaloid sequences. So if we just take a sequence here and select it like so. It plays for you that vocal aid sequence itself. Now you can put that into your tracks and then change it and edit it as you like. It is not set in stone. Let's talk transposing. In the middle of every vocaloid sequence, there's a letter, and this letter represents what key it is currently in. This sequence is in the key of C. Now let's say I don't want it to be in that key. Well, what I can do is come up here, you see this little button? It's transpose. You can transpose that into another key. In this case, I'm going to make my selection, and I'm going to transpose this into the key of F. So now all I have to do is take that sample, click and drag it onto my main interface, and there we go. Now I'm in the key of F. <laughs> Here on the main interface, if you want to get back to that screen, just hit F5 and it'll bring you right back. This slider right here allows you to control the volume of the sample when scrolling through the different wave and sequence files. The button next to it allows you to mute or unmute the files entirely. Let's move to the box on the left. The left is split into four sections, voice, language, type, and color. Color refers to the different kinds of styles available for the singer. Now if you click on one that's more dark, you will get new options that fall into that category of color. All that. The more color options you choose, the more choices you'll have to choose from. Type refers to the type of sample that you are looking for. This can be a genre or it can be a style of- Once again, choosing one or more type allows more options to be given. The language tab lets you select in what language you want the audio clips and sequences to be in. Anyway, allow me to show off some of the Japanese presets. <laughs> The voice section allows you to choose from what singer you want to hear these samples from. If you want just Amy, you can choose Amy and all of the samples you see here will be for her. Choosing a singer will automatically choose the language and then from there you can choose the type and color. Hit me. If you wish to start over, just hit the reset button and it'll undo all your selections. To get rid of the media page, just hit F4. Now we move on to the mixer. To access your mixer, just hit F3 and you will be brought to the page here. As you see on the left side, you have your channels and then on the right side, you have your master channel, which simply controls the volume of the entire Vocaloid project. Now if you notice, there is a faint blue line at the top of the project that is going up and down as I move this up and down. That is the master volume but put into a automation clip. And just like an automation clip, in real time you can change the value of it as the project goes along. To 
to undo any changes to your project, just hit Ctrl Z. To redo any changes, Ctrl Y. On each track, you have three different options. To mute the track so it is not heard, to solo the track so only that track is heard, and to record. Whenever you hit the R button, you have armed that track for recording. If you go to the top and hit the red button, it will start recording and using a MIDI keyboard, which is not set up in my room right now, you can record your own melodies. On the top of each track, the button effect is displayed. When highlighted, it shows you what track is using what effects that you have selected. Not only can you add effects to individual tracks, but you can also add effects for the overall project. If you go to your master track here and then add some effects there, it'll affect every single track within the project. Let's move on to the upper part of the interface. I forgot to show it, but in order to create a track, you want to right click and then add a vocal track or audio track. From there, select the pencil tool and draw out a vocal aid sequence. That is where your singer will go. If you wish to edit the sequence, simply double click on the highlighted part and you will be brought to the piano roll. In the top, you have your three main tools, scissors, pencil, and arrow. The arrow allows you to select the notes, the pencil allows you to draw the notes, and the scissors allow you to cut the notes. You can drag and move around the notes as you like. Using the up and down arrows, you can move the notes up or down by a half step. By hitting shift while moving up and down, the note will move in octaves. To remove a note and then move it on later down the timeline, hit Ctrl X and then Ctrl V. Now it appears here. To copy a note, hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V.